Welcome to season four of the How She Moms podcast. The new season doesn't officially start until next week, but I thought I'd drop a bonus preview episode this week for a couple of reasons. First, because I'm really excited about the great episodes, ideas, and guests this season, and I couldn't wait to tell you about them and share a few clips. Second, I wanted to give you a behind-the-scenes look at how I create the podcast. And third, I wanted to get you thinking about what episodes you might like to contribute to this year. You may think you don't have ideas or stories to contribute, but I promise you that's not true. I've never met a mom I didn't want to interview. And finally, the last reason I'm doing this bonus episode is that it's number 99, and I really wanted season four to officially start with episode 100. It's going to be a special episode featuring 12 of the ways creating this podcast has helped me rethink motherhood. This is the How She Moms podcast with Whitney Archibald. I'm a mother of five on a mission to help moms connect with your kids, manage your homes, and create your own unique version of motherhood. I curate ideas from different moms so you can pick and choose what works for you and your family. Guests and listeners ask me all the time about how I put together my episodes, so I thought my 99th episode and the start of this new season would be a good time to divulge all my tantalizing trade secrets. Except that one of the core characteristics of podcasters is that we don't really have many secrets. We're oversharers, if anything. But I will give you an inside look at how the How She Moms podcast comes together, starting with choosing episode topics. I used to have brainstorming sessions where I'd make lists and lists of all the motherhood-related topics I could think of and then narrow them down to what interested me the most. Soon, though, I realized that every episode and every interview automatically generates several new ideas, and I started having ideas coming out my ears. So I don't really need to do brainstorming sessions anymore. I just need to kind of look through those lists and figure out what is most applicable for each season. I start a new episode folder whenever I think of a new idea and I start filling it with relevant interview clips, articles I've read, and ideas I find on Instagram or other places. I just counted my files and I currently have 50 different topics folders, each with at least a couple of audio clips. So from this long list of topics, I usually turn to listeners to help me pick which episodes to focus on first, usually with polls on Instagram or just by talking to friends and seeing what moms seem to be struggling with. Then I pencil those topics into my editorial calendar for that season. For this fourth season, we're going to tackle some of the topics I've been working on for a while now. Of course, these are subject to change as other things come up and as I do more interviews, but this is the plan for now. One of the recurring topics that I plan to focus on this season is teenagers. How do we connect with them? How do we set boundaries? How do we prepare them to live on their own? And how do we help them care for their mental health? Next is technology. This will end up being a series as well because there's so much to talk about with technology. And I've actually been recording interviews on this topic since even before How She Moms was a podcast. It was just a blog. So we have a lot to cover in this. Is technology as bad as people make it out to be? How can we use it to connect with our families? How do we set healthy boundaries? How do we teach our kids to eventually manage their own technology use? The next one is one that always ranks high in the listener polls, and that is making friends with other moms, cultivating friendships, starting friendships, and we'll talk a little bit about how this changes in different stages of motherhood. This is actually a topic that I really need your help with. I do have several interviews already finished, but I would love to add some more stories about how you've made friends with other moms and even what you struggle with in friendships. Why is it hard to make friends as a mom? The next topic that's always highly ranked is body image. I'd love to explore both how we can improve our relationships with our own bodies, especially after having kids, and also how we can help our kids have a healthy body image. Then we're going to talk about family meetings. I have always wanted to be a fly on the wall when other families get together to strategize and talk about their plans, systems, struggles, all of that. If you're anything like us, these sometimes go well and sometimes end up being a catastrophe. If you do have family meetings, either formal or informal, one-on-one or as a whole family, I would love to hear how they go for you. Another fun topic that I have in the works is how we improvise. I just kept thinking that motherhood is basically like being on an improv stage all the time. So I'm collecting stories of times moms have had to implement plan B, C, or D on the fly and how those improvised plans succeeded or failed. I think this could be a really fun one. So again, I'd love your stories. Another topic I've been working on for a really long time is motherhood and work. 
Obviously, this is a huge topic, and I've already released several episodes about pursuing our passions and the work of motherhood. But right now, I want to focus on how we divide the labor of home management and childcare in our families, and also talk about the circuitous career paths that most of us take, pivoting, starting new careers late in life, stumbling upon careers that we never even knew about when we were younger, and just talking about how we make decisions about family and career. We're also going to be talking about kids and behavior, another one of the most frequently requested topics. I want to explore some of the popular approaches to behavior management, from love and logic to gentle parenting, and find out how these approaches actually work for real moms. I especially want to talk about how to deal with kids that challenge us, which is why the second real episode of this season is going to be an interview with Mary Van Geffen about how to parent spicy ones. That brings me to the next step in putting together this podcast, finding guests. I have a running wish list of people I'd love to talk to on the podcast, from personal mentors to How She Moms listeners to other podcasters and experts. If you would like to share your ideas or challenges on any of the topics I just mentioned, or if you'd just like to have a conversation, just shoot me an email at whitney at howshemoms.com or DM me on Instagram or Facebook. And if you think of someone else you'd love me to interview, I'd love it if you send their name my way as well. When I invite people to come on the podcast, I usually start by sending a list of questions about the main topic that drew me to them in the first place. But then I include a list of the other topics I'm working on as well to see if they have anything to add. That's how I'm able to get clips from so many different moms on so many different topics. Then, as I listen and re-listen to interviews, I take clips from our conversations and file them away under each upcoming topic. When it's time to start working on that episode, I listen to all the clips I've collected, figure out where my gaps and questions are, find more people to interview to fill those gaps, and then I start writing the episode. So each episode actually spans several years of interviews and takes hours and hours to write and edit. These cra- those crowdsourced episodes are the ones that start with how she something rather than a specific name because I'm trying to present a whole menu of approaches that you can choose from. Because those episodes are so time intensive, between writing, editing clips, recording, and editing again, I can only do one, sometimes two of these crowdsourced episodes a month. In the meantime, I've collected hours and hours of fabulous interviews with all these amazing women. So I pick from these interviews to feature one-on-one episodes. I still have so many great interviews in the archives waiting for the right moment to turn them into episodes of their own, and I record several more each week. I wish I could turn every interview I do into its own episode, but I've already interviewed more than 80 women for this podcast, and I have so many more people to interview. So I kind of have to pick and choose. This year, you will of course hear clips that I've collected from past years, voices that will be familiar to you from other episodes I've featured them in, but I want to share just a few of the new interviews I've already recorded for this season to get you as excited as I am. The first person I want to introduce you to is Mary Van Geffen, who I mentioned before. Mary is a parenting coach for what she calls spicy ones, and I'm going to let her define that for you. A spicy one is somebody who is authentically showing up in the world, fully themselves at the risk of upsetting or being rejected in some way. Um, They don't care about the consequence or what the world thinks. They just are fully who they are. So in that way, I would wish everyone to be a spicy one. Uh And a lot of people who've been pleasers their whole life or were not allowed to um, have needs growing up. They're just finding their inner spice. So I think everybody has a little bit of it or, and can have more, but in terms of children, in the context of parenting, it's really about temperament and it's, it's a child who is highly persistent and um, they just don't give up when you set a limit and they don't easily let go of big feelings, whether that's great joy or great distraughtness is distraughtness a word. (laughs) Um, they're intense. And so they bring this edge and this drama to things that maybe other people would be sort of more even keeled about. And um, they are highly sensitive. So they um, pick up on a lot of sensory and external cues, but also like if there's any shame at all kind of coming their way, they they're really hypersensitive to that. I highly recommend that you follow Mary Van Geffen on Instagram at Mary Van Geffen which will get you as excited for this episode as I am. The next guest I'll be featuring is Camille Ward, one of the hosts of the Family Looking Up podcast and a dear friend. I talked to Camille about connecting with teenagers. The thing that I've learned is that the relationship with that child is the number one most important thing 
it's more important than homework getting turned in. It's more important than their room being cleaned. It's more important than them walking in at 10 o'clock on the dot. And that's not to say that we let all those other things go. But I think primarily in our mind, as we deal with our teens, the number one thing we need to run through our mind every time, again and again and again, when we feel frustrated, is my relationship with this child is what will help this child more than any other thing that I'm teaching. Later this fall, we'll also hear the story of Jeannie Ewart and her daughter and how they regained connection after some very risky and extreme behavior in the teen years. We had tried everything. Therapy, we had some family therapy. We did, we we had a like kind of a small room in our laundry room with like a sliding door that I had used for an office, but it was empty. We tried putting her in there and taking everything away, um, locking her door, locking the wind, you know, all kinds of like, shut it down, tie it down. Then I tried the opposite, which was overly kind, right? Like, oh, she's depressed. So if I'm kind and I clean her room and we remodel her room, you know, then that will change her. I mean, really that's the thoughts that were coming, you know, what can I do to get her to be different? How's that for a teaser? Jeannie is a life coach and you can find her at JeannieEwert.coaching on Instagram, and Jeannie is spelled G-I-N-I, and then Ewart, E-W-A-R-T. As I mentioned, we'll also be talking about friendship this fall, and here's a clip from Hilary Erickson, host of the podcast Pulling Curls. She told me about a friend who helped her after she had her first baby. It's extremely lonely, and just, I had a friend who called every day for like the first two weeks, and it was so kind of her. I mean, she would just check in, and she would just be like, yeah, that totally sucks, so normal. And just knowing that would help me feel better. She didn't ever come over. She didn't bring a casserole. It was just a gal from work, one of the physical therapists. Um, But anyway, it was so helpful. So I really try and do that with other friends. I just try and check in and, and just see how they're doing. And finally, here's Jen Brimhall, who runs RaiseTheGood.com, a site that focuses on positive media. We approach tech in a way where it feeds our hearts and it feeds our minds and it feeds our connection. So there's a little taste to get you excited for this season, just a small fraction of the incredible guests I'll be featuring. And maybe that list will even include you. I'd love to meet you and include your voice on the podcast. Here's to a great season four. Thank you so much for listening to the How She Moms podcast and for being part of this community. There are so many other ways for you to connect and hopefully also contribute. I share tips and ideas regularly on Instagram and Facebook at How She Moms. You can find past episodes and other resources at HowSheMoms.com. And you can always just email me directly at Whitney at HowSheMoms.com. Special thanks to my own wonderful mom, Susan Singley, for recording my theme music. She played this song all the time when I was growing up, and to me, it's the soundtrack of motherhood. <laughs>